Illinois is such a strong man-to-man -man defensive team. All five guys very active in the passing lanes. They challenge shots, come up with big steal. Shot clock is at five. Here's Klotz, ball away, jump hook, air ball, taken down by Bobby. McFarland wouldn't go. Graham tips. He couldn't get it to go and knocked out of bounds. Well, the offensive boards for Oklahoma State are going to be huge early. I mean, they're getting a lot of opportunity. Yeah, active around the rim. And when you have a guy like Tony Allen taking it to the rim, the defense is going to keep all eyes on it. And when they do, you have to have weak side rebounding help. And guys from the top, the guards have to somehow slide in there and keep the Cowboys off the glass. They missed some almost easy opportunities there. They did. Klotz and Buckman go to the bench. James Thomas checks in along with Boddicker. And it's uh, Graham. Paulino with a push maybe outside. Yeah. Okay. Is that is going to be called, John, as uh, Steve Wilmer had the call. How about Joey Graham's numbers? Yeah, four four ball games, nearly 19 a game, 70% from the field. Can shoot it outside, powerful inside. Moreno checks into the lineup. And now the officials uh, taking a little bit of a hesitation here to tell the entire Oklahoma State team to uh, to sit down. They were all standing. And the officials don't want any distractions up and down the sideline as far as fast breaks and areas that they have to cover, rightfully so. Seven to four Cowboys on top of the early going. Now Marino is in the lineup for the Texas Longhorns, replacing Paulino at guard. Two three zone, they have to match up with Lucas and Bobic on the outside. Graham a double on him. Ivy with quick hands got it inside. There's Graham again. He'll take it strong and he was tied up. Possession error says it'll stay with Oklahoma State. So let's take a timeout. 15:43 left in this opening half. Three-point lead for the number one seeds. We are back, Oklahoma State, 7-4 in the uh, early going of this Phillip 66 Big 12 championship game. And the other game up in the ACC is in overtime between the Duke Blue Devils and the Maryland Terrapins, and it's Duke 79-78 with uh, three minutes and uh, 40 seconds left to play in that uh, first overtime. John, I mentioned rebounds just a moment ago. The total is 5-1 Oklahoma State. Two of those are offensive rebounds, and for Texas uh, in the early going, that is unusual for them to be outboarded that way, and they're going to have to do a better job to stay in this ball game. Well, and they struggled a little bit in the season meetings. Obviously, Oklahoma State won both games. They won down in Austin and dominated on the boards there. They were strong in Stillwater, which that game on March 1st clinched the conference title for the Cowboys. 2 3 zone, Longhorns will stay. Weatherspoon in the ball game along with Lucas. This is Graham strong to the hoop. And he scores the layups. Shot clock was down to two. And that's Weatherspoon with the foul. Weatherspoon quick with his feet, quick hands, good defender. Normally they put him in to uh, to spell Lucas, but uh, that's not the case. And he is such a great athlete, John. Now take a look against the zone. Shot clock winding down. Can't allow Graham just to take you right to the rim. Weatherspoon has a vertical leap of between 44 and 45 inches. One and out for Texas. Graham with the rebound. Here's Allen at the other end. Back to Graham, and he can't get it to go. But hustling on the rebound, had it knocked away. And now Ivy against Lucas. And the floater, not there. The Cowboys welcome this pace a little bit. They're a quick team, like to run, get some open looks. Ivy, I think he should have used his size advantage there. He's going against Lucas. One hard bounce, go sideways of him, then take it to the rim. Tried to hit the floater, the most difficult shot to make when you're coming straight on. Lucas pulled up and was going to try to set himself to take the charge. That's what Royella was conscious of. And as a result, he, uh, he missed the shot. He's going to go to the bench now. And Tucker will come into the lineup, number two, the freshman. Rebounding now eight to one in favor of the Cowboys. Graham, how valuable. 
unbelievable is he in the middle of a zone? I mean, you get it to him. He turns around, he faces, he can handle it, he can jump up and shoot it, or make the pass. This is an 8-0 run by the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Boddicker in the corner. Graham quickly out on him. Mismatch inside. Tucker got it. Weatherspoon on Tucker. Weatherspoon will not be able to handle him. I'm surprised Tucker faded away, but he understands too. He stays in there too long. The Cowboys will double him in a hurry. Graham outside for three. Not there. They battle on the tip. McFarland knocks the ball back, and it's Weatherspoon who gets it. Activity. Texas has to grab that basketball two hands. McFarland just slapped it to keep it alive. Tucker down low. Outstanding post player. He's got a great wingspan up and over the top. Even though Weatherspoon is smaller, Weatherspoon can get off his feet in a hurry. And let's check back to the studio and Chris Fowler. Hey, Rod, thank you. An update from the ACC championship game in overtime. You see Duke with a one-point lead, but watch Jamar Smith. Smith. Drives baseline, no Sheldon Williams. He's fouled out. Maryland has the basketball and a one-point lead. 2.41 to play in overtime. We'll keep you very well informed. Chris, our situation, Oklahoma State off to a very fine start, 11 to 6 lead over the Longhorns. And John, the way the Horns have been having problems uh, scoring, just not getting the offense they were toward late in the year. Well, they, they can't, they, they got to hold them uh, close here. Well, here's the thing, the only one shot 41% in the tournament so far. They're, so they're struggling, today they're at 38%. You can't do that against this Cowboy team because they shoot a high percentage all season long and they have continued in this tournament. James Thomas got a piece of that shot by Allen. Allen is one who has played well but has not played great as he had. Back inside to Tucker. Then out on the wing, same as a skip pass, and the three-pointer for Moreno was not there. Boddicker to Mouton. Nope, he can't get it either. James Thomas rebound. Second chance, missed opportunity by Mouton. 0 of 2 so far this afternoon. Well, a lot of hands and a lot of quick hands on that oh, floor. Oh, you bet. McFarland goes to the bench. Crawford comes in for Oklahoma State. Terrence, a senior out of Oklahoma City. 6'6", 230. Daniel Bobbick, his first first foul. Daniel Bobbick picks up his first foul. And that is team foul number three on the Cowboys. Four against the Texas Longhorns in the early going. Bobbitt got caught. All the hands of this Oklahoma State team are quick and active. They will make swipes at the ball. Got to make sure you have two hands on it. Be strong when you're inside. Mouton had a hand in his face by Bobbitt, so he got it back to Marino. Plenty of time on the shot clock with the reset. Boy, Graham is on here. Closes out in a hurry, doesn't Yeah, it? they do. They want to make sure that he does not get open for the three, and there's Allen with the block. Just took it away from Mouton. The quick pass inside to Graham, and he was fouled before the shot was taken. The defense on one end, and the great pass on the offensive end. Shot clock winding down. Mouton gets inside, and here comes Allen. You just split two Cowboys. They're active, and then when Allen pushes it up the floor, look at this pass. Hard and right on the money. They've got great hands. They all catch the ball well. So if you're passing it into the post, if you're Oklahoma State, they pass it with perception, and they pass it hard. Buckman comes back into the lineup. Boddicker goes out. He just picked up his second foul. Also, Klotz is off the bench, and he's back in the ballgame. Graham is getting a rest for Oklahoma State. Miller will replace him. So both coaches very liberal in their substitution in the early going. But the speed of this ballgame, the great pass. Ball game, as Allen jams it home, everything in favor of the Cowboys right now. Texas has got to do something to alter it. Are they got a big hill to climb? Underneath out of bounds against the zone. They just went a weak side back pick and throw it in the vicinity. Tony Allen will get it. This is a 10 to 2 run by the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Tucker dribbled into trouble and then just handed it to Oklahoma State. And Allen throws it away. Third turnover by this Cowboy ball club. But let's go back. Bobic just waiting for the back screen. And here comes. 
Tony Allen. Two back screens, one on the middle man, one on the weak side man. Great set play from underneath out of bounds. And that might get him off the side because, as we remarked in yesterday's ball game, he was good, but he was not that kind of Tony Allen play that you expect, John. Well, I think the key, though, is he's not uh, going crazy by not being great. His teammates have picked it up. John Lucas averaging 22. Joey Graham averaging 20 in the tournament so far. They are active, and Texas has to take care of the ball better. They can't pick up their dribble or they'll get eaten alive. Four turnovers against the Longhorns. Buckman's going to come to the bench. James Thomas will come back in. Sean Sutton up and uh, got five fingers to show to Lucas uh, the number of the, the play that they want to run. Sean does. Cut. Yep, there it is. And Lucas. The matchup of two former Baylor players. It was Taylor on Lucas. He backdoor cut him. Taylor never saw it. Now it's 12 2 on the run. The and bouncer in the anticipation by Allen and James Thomas with good hustle. hustle and Lucas threw it off of him and it'll stay with Oklahoma State. Great hustle both got. So let's take a timeout. 15 to 6 Oklahoma State. They got it going on all cylinders here in Dallas right now. Chris, the situation here, points in the paint. Oklahoma State 12 of their 15 points, Texas four of their six. And John, the quickness and the anticipation by Oklahoma State, we were talking during the timeout, it's just been devastating on the Texas offense. They can't get anything going. If you play this uh, Cowboy team, you've got to set better picks. You can't pick up your dribble. If you don't do either one of those very well, you're, they're going to eat you a lot. Texas has to get into this game. Cowboys started ready and they look ready on that defensive end. Longhorns step behind. John, if you're the Longhorns, where do you go? Who do you go to? Well, you just have to be more active. You've got to somehow create something off this defensive end, get rebounds, and push a little bit. Find some easy looks. Crawford lost the ball, but Bobby comes up with it. Weatherspoon, and that ball is blocked, but he comes right back to him. Did not hit the rim, so 10 seconds on the shot clock. Allen for three. Well, he, we talked, John, a couple of hours for game time, but he is due for a big game. And right now, he is playing pretty well. On both ends of the floor. Yep. Texas 3 of 11, Mouton 0 for 3. They're quick. They really anticipate passes extremely well. Shot clock winding down before. And Tony Allen's just going to position himself. Bobbitt, good ball movement. Stay away from his offensive player. Gives him space, create space. Thomas, too late to get to him. He's not a great long shooter, but good enough. Almost makes you become paranoid. you got to make the perfect pass or you're going to lose it. And there's another turnover against Texas. And, Ron, the defense inside on Klotz is they're not letting body to body, so Klotz can't feel him. So... They're just staying behind him so he can't feel. Let's Crawford get off. Now he can jump around him. Most big offensive players want to feel that body, the defender, so they can spin him. Good job by Crawford. Pass to Allen. And he lost that one out of bounds. Careless tried to catch with one hand. Joey Graham. So Joey Graham and Ivan McFarlane will come back into the lineup. And uh, Crawford and Bobbick or Miller, I should say, will get a breather. That's a nice luxury, isn't it? Graham and, <laughs> and McFarland come back into the lineup, and everybody else have been playing so well, you almost forgot that, that they were getting a breather. Yep. About to go under 10 minutes to play in this opening half. Weatherspoon wants to stay close to Taylor. Kenny Taylor, the best outside shooter for the long haul. Mouton and that ball tipped. They tried to get it inside the clock. And Tony Allen with the tip and the interception. McFarlane, but the ball just hung there.
Not a good first 10 minutes for Texas. They're not good on the offensive end. They're not able to capture the rebounds. That's five steals for Oklahoma State in the first 10 minutes and two for Texas. And now Graham says, let me go outside and shoot a three. They have, everybody's got it going right now. And what a tournament Joey Graham is having. He has been phenomenal. He keeps this up. He might be your tournament MVP. No doubt about it. Joey Graham, newcomer of the year this year in the Big 12. Transfer from Central Florida, which is uh, old ball club, is getting in the tournament. Transferred with his ten, twin brother, Stephen. And they're looking for Stephen to be a starter next year to replace number 24, Tony Allen. Taylor left along long enough, but he comes up short, and Boddicker on the follow can't get it. James Thomas will uh, score. James Thomas. That is uh, what we're used to seeing from Texas on misses. Big bodies gathering offensive rebounds and getting put backs. Handle that ball well, don't they? They really do. And Allen now from the other side. Hey, Ron, there wasn't anybody that had to dribble. They pass it, they pass it, they move it, they find an open man. Oklahoma State on fire, 56%. That's pretty normal for them. Yeah, it is because they led the nation for the last part of the season in the percentage and another turnover against Texas. Nine turnovers against the Longhorns. And Rick Barnes' ball club is down by 16 points, 24 to 8. Searching for answers, and how do you slow this Cowboy team down? Graham. This is Ivy. He'll try to push it up. Ivy dishes off to James Thomas, and that ball was altered, but he may have been fouled by Joey Graham. Good pass, but you see, saw how quickly these uh, cow, this Cowboy team rotates defensively. You get it inside, you think there's an easy one. And another player from the weak side comes. They rotate well. Well coached, obviously, under Eddie Sutton on that defensive end. First foul on uh, Graham. And a team fouls, that's four. Watch the spin move, and then Graham comes from all the way on the weak side. No easy baskets. But Thomas gets that uh, free throw. But Texas has had, John, only two field goals in the last nine minutes. And the only way you slow Oklahoma State down is if you score the ball and don't turn it over. Two things Texas has done, nine turnovers and only four of 14 from the field. Lucas gets it off to Allen out on the wing. He'll pull up and take another jumper. Almost got it, but that in and out, and here comes Ivy. Now, when you're confident, that's good, and they're playing confidently, but that's two quick shots, and Eddie Sutton doesn't necessarily want quick shots because they're getting everything else they want when they handle the ball. He's Tucker. He's tough. Terrific yeah. freshman season. We got just under eight minutes to play in the first half, and the leading scorer has four points. That's Tucker. Yep. That's hard to believe for a Texas team that scores in the 80s. They have had problems in the last two weeks scoring the basketball. They had to come back Friday night against Oklahoma late. Lucas, it's a two. Cowboys almost invite you to try to make a pass. They, they kind of lay off the passing and then shoot the gap. Tony Allen especially. Taylor. Taylor can almost be the X factor for the Longhorns when they get in the NCAA. If he's hot, stretches the defense so far out. Well, McFarland really put a fastball inside to uh, Graham. He was able to hold on to it, but couldn't get the shot. for three. John 
Lucas comes away with the rebound. Good no call. Ivy tried to set it up. Try to get one. So let's take a timeout. 6.34 left until halftime. And it's all Cowboys. They've doubled up the Longhorns 26 to 13. So welcome back to Dallas. 26 to 13, Oklahoma State on top. And now let's update you what has just happened up on Tobacco Road. Maryland has ended the five year winning streak of the Duke Blue Devils. Final score 95 to 87 in overtime. Maryland. So with John Lucas, who is a graduate of Maryland, when he hears that score, he's happy about what's going on here. There he is. They just announced the score. How about that? Maryland. Maryland knocks off the Duke Blue Devils. They had won five conference titles in a row. And Maryland comes up with a win. So John Lucas. They may they have two things to celebrate here. They were afternoon. done in half yesterday, weren't they? Yeah, they were. Oh, that was a phenomenal comeback yesterday, and what a win today. And they were a bubble team about two weeks ago. <laughs> I understand that Gary Williams at yesterday at halftime went in and really questioned their toughness and their character, and by golly, they came out and really got to it. Well, uh, the senior Lucas's son having a solid game here, six points, three or three from the field. He and Tony Allen, the co-Big 12 players of the year, 16 of the 26 points. And as Boddicker and Tucker fight for the ball, they knock it out of bounds. Those who have been watching that uh, upset of, by Maryland in overtime over the Duke Blue Devils. Welcome to the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship as uh, Championship Week presented by 7 Up. Our situation here, it's been all Oklahoma State in the early going, 26 to 13 over the Texas Longhorns. And it has been a thing where the Horns have not been able to do a lot right. And the Cowboys have done very little wrong. Texas only shooting 32%, nine turnovers in Oklahoma State. Not giving this Longhorn team many open looks. They put it on the floor. They've created turnovers like that. One. That is 10 turnovers, and we have yet to play 15 minutes in the ball game. John, do you remember nights? First of all, let's give credit. Oklahoma State has caused this kind of play, but do you remember nights when it just seemed like you couldn't get anything to go in the right direction? Yeah, and you almost have to take a deep breath and slow it down. This Longhorn team is trying to do everything so fast the way Oklahoma State wants to play. Yeah. They have picked up their dribble. They have held the ball too, you know, too much inside and not found the right guy. Got to take a deep breath, do what they've done all year, they'll be fine. Do it on a defensive end, try to find some easy baskets when they're surveying the floor, like now. Nice play there by Jason Klotz. Joey Graham with his second Joey personal Graham, foul. Personal foul. And that's the fifth team foul on the Cowboys as Bobbick will go to the bench. Graham off to a great start again this afternoon. Seven points early in this game. He's averaging 21 in the first two games in the Big 12. And John, for people who have not seen Oklahoma State play this year, they are hard to match up with because of their wing players, because they are not just guys who uh, take drop steps. They can create off the dribble very quick, great leapers. But Graham and Allen, two absolutely two of the best. Well, they've got so many offensive weapons. They score inside, not traditionally with McFarland, not a post-up player, and it's Tony Allen, co-player of the year. Another good pass. Well, it's on the floor. Klox comes away with it. Tucker at the other end. Back to Klotz, and he can't get it. And there's Graham. One and out as Joey Graham skies for the rebound. That's four rebounds for him to go along with seven points. An outstanding first half for Joey Graham. Allen, Lucas, Graham can all shoot it, can all handle it. Hey, this kid's been on fire. 70% from the field the last four ball games. Johnny had 25 earlier. We were just talking before we came back with uh, the audience from 
the rest of the nation, but uh, Graham's got a good shot to be an MVP of this tournament if he continues this pace right here. Big 12 newcomer of the year had 36 in a home win and had to have every one of them against Nebraska earlier in Stillwater. Blocks kind of short arm that one. The ball knocked out of bounds by Texas. So let's take a timeout. 3.59 left until halftime. 14 point lead for the Cowboys. Coach Barnes trying to turn things in a different direction. ESPN's exclusive presentation of Championship Week is brought to you by Phillips 66, proud sponsor of today's Phillips 66 Big 12 basketball tournament. You can count on Phillips 66 quality ProClean gasolines. And in part by 7-Up and your local 7-Up bottler. Make 7-Up yours. Well, welcome back to Dallas and a reminder this game is on high definition television presented by Phillips and also Best Buy. Well, day before yesterday, Eddie Sutton, they sang happy birthday to him here at the arena. He was 68 years old. The way this thing's going, this could be a long celebration before <laughs> he leaves Dallas, Texas, John. Well, Oklahoma State is just outstanding for those who have not seen them this year. They are a great ball club. You go 14-2 and two in this league, conference champ. Now, we thought Texas, again, had to come out and shoot the ball well. Friday night they didn't. Saturday they didn't at 41 percent. They got away with wins. Tonight, this afternoon, they're 32 percent, 10 turnovers. That's why they're down. Oklahoma State is a powerful offensive team. They shoot the ball well. They take quality shots. If you turn it over and don't shoot well yourself, you're in big trouble. But the thing that Texas fans have to admit, they probably would like to say that Texas has come out and not played well. Do me a favor. Give credit to the Cowboys because they have created the not so good play. And it's a team that focused the fact that uh, Tony Allen and John Lucas are co-players of the year, and they're mentioned a lot. But that guy right there, Joy Graham, has been phenomenal. When Bobak has an open shot, he makes it. McFarland is dominated inside, and the guys off the bench are doing their jobs. And they have just been spectacular and fun to watch. Well, the other thing that you uh, have to keep in mind is that Joey Graham has a twin brother, Stevie. And they are thinking he will come in and replace Tony Allen next year in the starting lineup. Weatherspoon will come in. And the young man we were just talking about, Stevie Graham, will uh, go back to the bench. Stevie Graham not yet probably as confident as his brother and uh, has taken a little longer, but uh, is going to be an outstanding player. Watch yep. him in practice. Coach Sutton uh, talked several times when we did Oklahoma State games this year that, that they have every confidence that he has the same kind of athletic talent as his brother. That's a shot Mouton took uh, in, in other games and can get it easily. Cowboys so quickly off their feet made Mouton adjust that ball and hurt. Lucas looks back over at Sean Sutton, who was up again calling offensive plays. The last one that they ran was a backdoor cut by Lucas. It worked beautifully. 2 3 zone when Graham gets it in the middle around the free throw line. He is deadly. Can turn and shoot it or put it on the floor for good passes. Shot clock is now at nine. Lucas way outside. Mouton with the rebound. Ivy. Nope. Cowboys have been getting back defensively, Ron, and Ivy has not waited to get odd numbers. If he'd hesitated just a little bit, he might have had Thomas on the wing coming in. Thomas will pick up his second personal foul. Texas just searching for ways to get their offense going. This is the second game in a row that the Longhorns have gotten in foul trouble early as far as putting the uh, opposing team in the bonus situation. One and one, seventh team foul. And it'll be Crawford who goes to the line. <laughs> Terrence Crawford, who has uh, had a lot of injuries since his arrival at Oklahoma State, outstanding high school player, has really been valuable this season, though, off the bench. Missed the first six with an injury, but really comes in and bangs and does what he can on the offensive end. Rick Barnes talking to official Mark Whitehead across the way. The lob to 
Thomas. That's McFarland on him. And a foul is called on McFarland. They're not the tallest team, this Cowboy team, but every position they have, they're quick. Watch McFarland get over there. And a tough call on him, probably the right call. But that's what you find out when you're a big guy inside. Wherever you try to go, McFarland usually beats you to the spot. I think the call came from when he uh, poked his chest out and tried to bang him as Klotz gets the freebie on the inbounds pass. Good pass inside. Klotz wants more touches. He's had a terrific tournament, nearly 14 points a ball game. Klotz now with four points. This is Weatherspoon, and he was fouled going to the hoop by James Thomas. Well, the seven of halftime report just ahead. Chris Fowler, along with uh, Digger Phelps, Jay Billis, and Steve Lavin. Terrapin come back again. Kentucky cruises, and let's go dancing. Kentucky could easily be a number one seed and probably deservedly so, no doubt about it. Gosh, there will be some nervous uh, young men and women this afternoon, uh, along with their coaching staff. Thomas goes to the bench. Boddicker will come back in. Thomas picking up his third foul, and uh, I would doubt that we would see him anymore here in this first half. Ron Mouton still scoreless for Texas. Leads him in scoring. First team all Big 12 selection. Has had four shots, only one really an open good look. And he got a foul 22 seconds into the ball game, and that's that's virtually the last time we've really called his name yep. over any situation. And the matchup, Tony Allen, one of the best defenders, along with Royale Ivy on ball. To get this back out to Mouton, and he will drive the lane, and then he will score it, and he was fouled. Strong move. He could have taken a shot from the wing, but he wanted a closer look. McFarland will pick up his second. Watch Lucas get over to Mouton in a hurry. Good call, because McFarland, yeah, he got there the after uh, Mouton had taken off. Soft well, he, touch. he heard us talking about him. <laughs> Put it on the floor, took it strong to the hoop. He His won the first won, field goal. He won the game Friday night. They were down two to Oklahoma or down. Yeah, down two. He drove similar to that, except he went down the middle of the lane, drew contact, made the basket, made the free throw, the winning points. He's had a terrific senior season and a great college career in a long one uniform. We mentioned the play of Joey Graham, the Big 12 newcomer, and he is the third weapon that some people would talk about. He can shoot it outside, he's strong inside, he has that kind of the James Worthy stiff arm dunk a little bit that uh, big game James used to do. That foul was on Jason Klotz, his first. 19 fouls against the Longhorns. And the Cowboys have not taken advantage of going to the strike. Only four of nine for the free throw line. Good catch. Clutch. Good Had catch. Double clutch to get the handle on that one because of quick Cowboy hands and then got it up and got the easy one. And again, Crawford tried to get around him to steal the pass. Missed that time. You pay a penalty. Graham put it on the floor and he was fouled going to the hoop. Watch how Terrence Crawford is going to gamble. He's gotten a couple of these, but the pass is away from the defender. Good hands by Young Klotz inside. Get out of here! Got it to go. And it's now 11 points for Joey Graham. Ron, every time we have seen the 2-3 zone from Texas, Joey Graham finds that seam around the free throw line right in the middle, and he's been so valuable. Klotz picking up that second foul. Uh, Rick Barnes gets him to the bench here for the final 141. Back to a 12-point lead for Oklahoma State. Longhorns had posted to 10 just a moment ago. Mouton. Nope. Ball tipped away, and it's going to stay with Texas. They help and recover in a hurry. 
You know, Texas was slow in getting off the snide yesterday against Kansas and also but Friday they, night against Oklahoma. That's right. And then but they kept coming back. In fact, they led yesterday's game against KU by two points. But uh, this this Oklahoma State team's a different animal, John. Different situation. Well, they score the ball so well. Yeah. Uh, Oklahoma couldn't score it in the last few minutes of that game. And yesterday, Texas was a little more solid to start that second half against Kansas. But they've got it. Texas has enough weapons. They can come back in a hurry. They've got great outside shooters. Parker, Mouton, Taylor. Mouton only one of six this afternoon. They just don't get a lot of open looks. Ivy falling away. Almost didn't draw iron on that. Boddicker on the follow and he'll score. Mm -hmm. follow. First two points for Boddicker. Bobbick left all alone. Nope, and the follow. Nobody blocked out. Tony Allen. Yep. Trying to push, trying to create. Ivy will miss this one, and uh, Bodker with the rebound. Again, we expect Ta Texas to bang and shove, and now on their end, they didn't rebound this one. Nobody blocks out, and Tony Allen, which is probably the first guy, either Allen or McFarland, you better find. Crawford picked up the foul, John, the two's first. DJ. Roy Al Ivy only a 56% free throw shooter, but made big ones down the stretch against Kansas. We saw him earlier this year against Missouri in the overtime. Goes six of six from the foul line. He is very focused. The game's on the line. Misses the second. Tony Allen comes down with the rebound. Six se seconds differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Yesterday before the half, they had a double screen for Bobbick to get a three. First foul, no second foul of Muta. Uh, you mentioned Rick Barnes said after we saw uh, yeah, Oklahoma State in Texas on March 1st, Allen's just a tough matchup. He said. You know, let's give credit where it's due. Is that we had a, we had an answer for everything Oklahoma State had except number 24. And he said, I'm not sure anybody in the league's got an answer yeah, for him. He's strong. He's so good with the ball. Plays the game as as a lot of great players do. It looks like it's slow motion to him. He takes his time and really gets the ball where he wants to get it. Seven of 13 from the line for the Cowboys. And a timeout called with 26.4 seconds. We're going to take that with them. 12-point lead, Oklahoma State. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Dallas, Texas, and the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship Game Tournament Week. Brought to you by 7-Up in our situation. 12-point lead for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. And they have made it look easy here in this opening half. Shutting down what is normally a high-powered Texas offense. Watch for Taylor or Mouton coming off screens. Taylor is a quick catch and release player. Ivy, five seconds on the clock. Kind of put that one rather than shoot it. And uh, misses it. So as they head to the bench, Joey Graham. What a tournament he is having. We're at halftime with the score, 36-24 Oklahoma State. Eddie Sutton trying to make it a happier 68th birthday. Now let's send it to Chris Fowler. Chris? We celebrated a couple of days ago the win, but like to celebrate for the championship this week. And welcome to our 7-Up Report. Chris Fowler, Digger Phelps, Jay Billis, and Steve Lavitt. 21-4 run against them. Texas managing to claw back a little bit here. Yeah, they jumped out 24-8. to They just really played that aggressive physical defense, and when you only get eight points with nine left and a half, you got problems. Yeah, Texas started out in a 2-3 zone. I think that took away a little bit of their aggressiveness when they went back to man-to-man. -to -man. That's when they were a much better team. All right. Yeah, te Texas also struggling, I think, to execute offensively in the half court because Oklahoma State is so quick in the passing lane, smothering ball pressure. ESPN's presentation of the 2004 Phillips 66 Big 12 Men's Basketball Tournament is brought to you by Nissan, who invites you to shift the way you move through the world.
Welcome back to Dallas in the second half of the Phillips 66 Big 12 tournament. It's the championship game. And uh, John Sunbold, when you look at what has happened so far, 36 to 24, Texas being out rebounded. They're 0 for 4 from the arc, and they're only shooting 35%. Where do you put the magic wand as far as turning this thing around for Rick Barnes? Well, they didn't have a turnover in the last seven minutes, so that's a positive. When they were close in Stillwater, they actually shot 50%. They've got to turn it on a little bit, and when you go to Oklahoma State, you think of how well they played on the offensive end. Joey Graham continues to play well. He has been spectacular in the last few ball games. Freddy Sutton in his ball club. 12 points in the first half, and Tony Allen picking up right where he left off during the Big 12 season. He's so valuable in defensive end. Offensively, he can do it all. A great half for Oklahoma State. We'll see if Texas can get back early and if Mouton can really get going. Mouton, one of six in the first half. Only two points. Now, we still got 20 minutes of basketball to play, but the devastating thing that also happened in the first half, the really tough defense by the Cowboys, and as a result, John, they had an 18-2 run, and the way Texas is having trouble manufacturing points, yeah, that's devastating. Cowboys came out and started right in the fourth gear. I mean, they came out yeah. hard. Texas kind of lulled into it, as they did Friday night against Oklahoma. They can't do this against the Cowboy team. Paulino, who started the ball game, that we didn't see him much in the first half after that. McFarlane. Starts the second. And McFarland dances behind Klotz so that you can't get a good look. Strong move. Muta. Well, he was one of six. That's pretty high percentage right there. And they have to have those kind of plays early to get the Texas fans involved. Almost feels like uh, it's three-fourths full with Oklahoma State fans. Yeah, you're right. They have been very vocal, but their team's been playing great. Here's Graham against Buckman. Couldn't get it to go, and as it goes out of bounds, the ball will go back to the Longhorns. Well, we mentioned Mouton. Allen gives him baseline. Normally, there would be help defense. McFarland was late because he was messing with Klotz. Low post position on the weak side. Bouncer inside. Klotz rebounded by Allen. He does not miss many of those. Good and steal. Ivy with uh, good anticipation got to steal and then uh, his momentum took him out of bounds. And Eddie Sutton not happy with Tony Allen. Well the first half stats 46 percent for the Cowboys 36 for the Longhorns and the turnovers that number 10 came very very early. Yeah very early and all those points off turnovers as part of that 18 to 2 run they just swarmed the Longhorns took it from one end to the other. So Royal Ivy whistled for his first foul. I mentioned Eddie Sutton unhappy with Tony Allen. There are times Allen is lackadaisical with the ball. Doesn't, you know, it, it, I think the game comes so easy for him. But what I love about it, he's player of the year, but Eddie Sutton's not going to kind of give him a break. Good pass there, though. Well, that's textbook right there. Yeah, Just a little give and go, comes up and screams and curls toward the hoop. and. Nobody picked him up defensively. And you see the strength of Joey Graham. He doesn't mind getting his body into, into the bigger Texas Longhorn bodies. He's a little quicker. Well, they screened Ivy very hard and then uh, spun off toward the hoop, and he was free. Good matchup, Allen and Mouton. Shot clock is down to seven. Plots on the turnaround, and yes, it will count. Got it off with the thing going to zero. The shot clock was heading on down. And what he does so well, he never brings the ball down. So we'll take a timeout. Ten-point lead, Oklahoma State. Eddie Sutton talking it over with his club. We'll be right back. Oklahoma State, 38 to 28. And here's a reminder, with five times the resolution, basketball in high definition is like nothing that you have ever seen before. If you haven't experienced high definition TV, go to your local Best Buy and check out a Philips HD TV. 
And what you're looking at right there is what they are playing for here this afternoon. The trophy in basketball for the championship of the Big 12 tournament, the Phillips 66 Big 12 tournament. Won the last three years by the Oklahoma Sooners, the last team, uh, Iowa State 2000 to win, or 1999 to win the Big 12 championship and then the tournament championship. John, on the high definition, all uh, football season long, our primetime game on Saturday night, uh, we were in high definition, and I was fortunate enough to have one of those huge high def monitors <laughs> in front of us up in the booth for the season long. And I'm telling you, it does change the way you view sports. It and is simply spectacular. It's like being there. And you, my friend, sound marvelous in high def. I'll have to tell you, <laughs> it, it goes across the whole household in my house. So we played the first couple of minutes of the second half. Eddie Sutton wanted to call a timeout to make sure that his ball club did not become lackadaisical. He was not totally uh, just amused by defensive play on the part of his team. McFarland with the offensive rebound gives Oklahoma State another opportunity. It's a team that shot over 51% on the year from the field. In the tournament so far, 56%. Ken Paulino came away with the rebound. Here's Mouton. Can't get it. And the tip wouldn't go. Boddicker fights for the rebound. The cheer during the timeout is Texas fight. And you can see some fight this second half. Joey Graham. Ivy keeps it alive and Boddicker gets nailed. Joey Graham and it's his third. We expected this Longhorn team to come out. A little enthusiasm. Well, the block by McFarland and the put back by Klotz. And it was interesting. Yesterday, Joey Graham got three fouls, played virtually the entire second half of that first semifinal game. It didn't pick up another one. Good start. Longhorns now only down eight. Ball is chipped by Mouton. Lucas. And how many big shots has Lucas hit during the Big 12 season when they need a hoop? Shot clock is at seven. Bobbitt loses his footing and a whistle and a foul on Royale Ivy. Ivy thought he had one. Bobbitt stumbled. Ivy's a good stealer. Well, it's Selection Sunday, and ESPN is the place to be. Five o'clock, the NCAA Women's Selection Special exclusively unveils the women's brackets. And at six o'clock, Sports Center takes over. Then at seven o'clock, get tips on filling out your bracket as ESPN brings you Bracketology. Well, Allen. Strong to the hoop, but he was fouled. Allen probably likes the matchup with Royal Ivy Garden. And Royale, one of the best Royal defenders in the Big 12 Ivy. on ball. But when Allen takes him in size, he's got a size advantage and a quickness. He can just post him up and make a quick turn. So that's two quick fouls on Royal Ivy, and he goes to the bench. Kenny Taylor about to uh, check back into the lineup and he'll come on. Taylor a better offensive player as far as shooter than Ivy. Not the defender though. See if they can get Taylor on track. He had a good game against Oklahoma Friday night. Double digits. 16 points. So he gets one of them. Nine point lead. Paulino, Lucas all the way around the horn, chasing him down. Look for the bounce pass inside. He'll pull up and take the three. It was Paulino who came out smoking against Wake Forest when nobody else could hit and helped pave the way for a Longhorn victory over the Demon Deacons earlier in the season. He does not look to score often, but can shoot it, as can young Lucas. John Lucas with an answer. He's got nine. He has had an answer all season long. Taylor. Let's heat this building up, partner. This is going to be fun. Well, you're right. They better turn up the air conditioning right now, the way things are going, or, or drop it down a little bit. Longhorn's trying to make a run. That makes it a six-point game. Biggest lead, 17 by Oklahoma State back in the first half. Joey Graham not there. Klotz rebounds. Oh, 
rocker step sometimes can get a defender off, so Mouton can go quickly up. Klotch reverses that. I'm not so sure McFarland didn't get a piece of it. The bouncer back to Klotch. And on the follow, he'll score and was fouled. And the Longhorns are pounding it inside. And the Cowboys a little bit relying on just their athletic ability, not boxing out. Boddicker walks right in, gets a rebound, nice pass, and Klotz stays with it and finishes. Well, McFarland now with three fouls to go along with Joey Graham with three fouls. Klotz with 12 points today, double figures in five of his last six has really been the offensive force inside for Rick Barnes down the stretch. Klotz knocks it down and will take a timeout. 42 to 39. Texas draws near. Will history repeat itself? Can the Cowboys maintain their hold over the horns? 42 to 39. Texas close as they've been since it was 9 to 6 back in the early portions of the first half. Let's we'll show you a little video here. Oklahoma State played BYU and they got clobbered. On the boards, 44 to 18. So Sean Sutton, son of the head coach, said, go get some issues from the football team. We're going to put some physical play on the floor. So they put on helmets and shoulder pads. And uh, John, as you can see, there's some pretty good collisions going on there. And I think the message was uh, was not only heard, but it served a good purpose. There's Sean right there. We'll look at Sean, yeah, and it served a purpose. This has been a very good rebounding team. And in the two meetings against Texas, Oklahoma State out rebound Longhorns in both games. Moreno in the lineup for the Longhorns gives this ball club more quickness out front. Lucas. Didn't get over on him in time, but the ball is tipped and knocked away. And let's see who this is going to be on. Boy, the coach is upset with Boddicker. Eddie Sutton, not happy. Boy, look at Eddie Sutton. Couldn't tell if Boddicker, obviously something happened, and we'll see it. There were a lot of bodies right there. Let's see if we can... Uh, can pick it up. Well, it was a little push, but I don't think it was the biggest push as uh, Terrence goes out. There's a little shove. And I would say this. There was a small shove, but it wasn't uh, monumental. It wasn't a thrown elbow, a little push. John. Yeah, and John. <laughs> yeah. I've had ladies hit me harder than that <laughs> in the supermarket. A little overreaction from the staff. <laughs> On the sideline. Tony Allen called for his second personal foul. Yeah, I, I know Coach Sutton, <laughs> he's involved in this thing and he wants to win this ball game, but it, this is a little bit of a, an overreaction. The tough thing about this is. Coaches Sutton and Barnes have so much respect for each other, and I don't want to see anything happen that would damage that relationship. They will be okay. Play on. See if Crawford stays in it mentally. And see if Boddicker can answer, because he will get booed when he catches the ball. Taylor, we outside, wow. almost an air ball. Joey Graham comes away with it. Spoon, and the ball is almost stolen, and Oklahoma State comes back with it. Sloppy on both ends. 
Witherspoon probably had a layup. It was a two-on-one. Joey Graham had given it to him, and Witherspoon, trying to be unselfish, tried to give it back, but Taylor knocks it away. Well, Moreno uh, picks up the foul, and the foul is uh, team foul number four. Klotz will go to the bench. James Thomas will check back in for Texas. Sometimes stoppage of play is good, though, to get everybody calmed down, fans included. This game is not supposed to be easy to win. No. <laughs> Two three zone. Cowboys handle this easily in the first half. Nice ball fake. Lucas got it. Moreno went for the ball fake. And John Lucas with his 11th point to knock it down. James Thomas with the jump hook. Very flat. No arc on that one at all. Moreno, good defender. Came in the last 28 seconds on Friday night against Oklahoma to make defensive stop. John Lucas has been so effective all season long, knocking in long jump shots. So you have to react when he lifted the ball. Moreno jumped by him, made this one easy. Boddicker just picked up his third foul, and of course, that's to the delight of the Oklahoma State fans. The Cowboy fans have traveled well down here to Dallas, and I imagine they will be seated and playing in Kansas City, and they will travel well to Kemper Arena. Yep. A lot of folks wearing orange here today. Zone when Joy Graham gets it at the free throw line. Deadly the first half. Allen back over to Lucas. Shot clock is under 10. Drives to the hoop. Unlucky on the shot. And Tucker will take it away for Texas. Ron Texas has not been able to run and get many easy looks. No. It's they Cowboys. really have it, John. You're right. The, the freebie points, those easy ones you like to pick up, hasn't been there. And they average nearly 80 points a ball game on the season. Paulino. Tough shot, not the one Rick Barnes wants from Paulino. Well, today, 43% Oklahoma State. They average 52. And you see Texas well below theirs at 40%. And Texas has been around that number all tournament long. Well, the putback couldn't get it to go, and James Thomas comes down with the rebound. <laughs> got to be patient. Got to find their guys inside or Mouton off the screen. Kind of a small bounce pass as he rolled it into Tucker. And uh, the foul is on Crawford. It's his second. So we'll go to break. 44-39, Oklahoma State. Welcome back to the Phillips 66 Big 12 Tournament here in Dallas, Texas at the American Airlines Center. John Lucas has been magnificent throughout the tournament, and he's picked it up again here today, John. Averaging nearly 23 a ball game in the first two sessions, and on this one he's got 11, and it seems to have an answer, and he has all season long. Transfer from Baylor, outstanding shooter, good floor leader. He has been great for Oklahoma State, and, and Eddie Sutton has been great for John Lucas. The understanding of how to play the game and what he needs to do to help his teammates throughout the ballgame. That's probably the most important thing right there, because even his dad uh, talked with us about that when we were at the Oklahoma game, that uh, how much he has improved under the tutelage of, uh, of Coach Sutton. Attendance today, 17,324. Improvement on decision-making. Because he's always been an outstanding shooter, he always thought shot first, which is fine because he's a good shooter. But the coaching staff at Oklahoma State has understood that, hey, it's more important to win games, and we'll show you how we can do that. Tony Allen. I don't know how he got between it. Thomas was coming down to double-team. And when you do, you can't allow a player to step through 
Tony Allen made the spin move, got between Mouton and Thomas, and made the finish. Watch Thomas, he's right there. Boy, cannot happen. Third personal foul. Team foul number six on the Longhorns. If he closes that gap, it could be a charge when Allen makes that spin move. Completes the three-point play. 17 points now for Tony Allen. And five straight points for the Cowboys after this lead was narrowed to three. Selection Sunday at ESPN, the place to be next. The NCAA Women's Selection Special, then at 6 o'clock Sports Center, 7 o'clock, get tips on filling out the bracket with Bracketology. Good pass. Thomas left alone and missed the shot. Surprised he didn't duck it, John, well, in that James position. Normally power dunks that one. Taylor had come off the screen and stretched McFarland across. Weak side, looking the other way. Fourth personal foul. On Graham. So that means that Miller is off with the warm-ups, and he'll be checking into the lineup. The interesting thing about Oklahoma State, though, Graham's got 14 points today. Very good outing again, but now here comes Tony Allen with, uh, even if he ended with just the 17 points, that's <laughs> this will be the best game that he would have had through the tournament, John. Yeah. So somebody steps up, it appears, every ball game with the top seeds out of Stillwater. Well, they've been doing it all season long. Yesterday in the win against Texas Tech, Ivan McFarland had 19 points. So they've got scores on the floor. 2 3 zone. Bobic has been quiet this afternoon. This is what he'd like to see the zone. Bobic in the corner. Got to get on better balance. Tends to fade away and release it too early. Thomas fouled by Bobbitt. Second foul on him. One of the first possessions we've seen Texas in an all-out sprint to the offensive end. Moving the ball by pass. Mouton catches and James Thomas on a dead sprint. All Bobbitt could do was get there late and foul. Thomas, who will leave... Uh, Texas program is the all-time leading rebounder to pass on LaSalle Thompson this year. He's had a great career. So Bobbitt goes to the bench. Thomas knocks down the second one. Weatherspoon into the lineup again. So the Cowboys using both Weatherspoon and Lucas a lot in this ball game this afternoon at the guard positions. There's Miller back to Weatherspoon and he lost the handle on it right in front of Muta. Hard pass to handle. I think he knew he had Lucas on his right side, didn't catch it. The last six Texas points are at the free throw line. We told you back in the first half, two field goals in nine minutes in the first half, and they're on another drought right now. And the quick hands, did they save it? They did not. Cowboys more active. It's amazing, Ron, since the seven minute mark in the first half, Longhorns only have one turnover. Hope that young lady's okay. And the players were very gentlemanly. They stopped to make sure that she was. Taylor off the inbounds pass, got the ball, had a good look, and couldn't get it to go. Here's Allen. And McFarland missed it. 
He does not miss many. Mouton has Lucas on him. I would expect him to get in some scoring range area. He can jump over the top. Paulino <laughs> dribbled all the way in, came back out. Shot clock is now at nine. And here's Ty to Tucker. Dishes it off to James Thomas. Misses again a makeable shot. And he'll go to the free throw line. I think that's the fourth personal on McFarlane if that's who they got. Ivan McFarlane, his fourth personal. Yep, you're right, John. One thing that could hurt Oklahoma State as they try to get to San Antonio is if they get in foul problems. They're not the deepest of teams. And Texas is a kind of ball club that is deep and will keep pounding it inside. There is the foul problem we just talked about. Joey Graham, Ivan McFarland, both with four. They will be on a sideline together. Jason Puts pressure on Crawford and Miller. More so on the defensive end, they've got a rebound. John, the last field goal by Texas, 14-48. Wow. Almost the 15 minute, but that's almost six minutes that they've gone without a field goal. And if, uh, if any kind of funk for this Texas team the last two weeks, it's been on that offensive end. Jason and they struggled on the road in the last game of the year against Kansas State won by the Wildcats in Manhattan they have struggled here really both days finally got it on track the second half against Kansas yesterday so it's a four-point ball game with 902 to play <laughs> Allen falling away got it Big players make big plays. You step right in the middle of the zone and just beg for that ball. John, this is funny. We talked about this as we walked into this arena this afternoon that he was due. Yep. He just, the way he's been playing has been okay, but not Tony Allen style. And you can see it on his face. He demanded that ball when he stepped in the zone. Tucker misses. Good job by Miller. Out to Allen, yep. And that's what Miller and Crawford have to do. They have to keep Texas off the glass. Klotz thought he had one. Eddie Sutton yelling instructions against this zone from the sideline. Shot clock is at seven. Bobbitt doesn't see it. Lucas does, and he takes just a gargantuan three and is well off the mark. They never got into a good offensive set. And the Longhorn drop continues for a field goal. Doesn't that seem to be a quick shot, though? That I mean, Paulino's a solid player to Goodwin and can make that shot. When you need a basket, though, that, that the first look is not the one you have to take. Selection uh, show coming up next. We'll find out. That's exclusively who the NCAA women's brackets how they will uh, steer Bobby quick release not there and that's going to be Tucker on the hole and who will make history tonight and make their first Big 12 championship win here in Dallas neither Oklahoma State or Texas Oklahoma State was in the finals of this tournament in 1999 they lost to Kansas they were champs in the Big 8, 1983 and 1995. Texas, 94 and 95, back-to-back -back championships in the Southwest Conference. But in the Big 12, neither of these teams have won the tournament. And in fact, history was made in Stillwater uh, for Coach Sutton and his guys because the first outright regular season championship since 1965. And Coach Ivel was the head coach then. Tells you a little bit about how hard it is to win a, a good league. Well, to let you know, I mean, how excited the people in Maryland were this afternoon oh, to my. end five years of domination by Duke. And 
You know, sometimes fans just become kind of callous. Say, well, hold on, it's got to be easier when we can do it again. And some focus just on a national championship. But yeah. uh, I tell you what, that, that's hard enough with just winning a league and, and winning this tournament today. Coaches and fans love to put trophies in the trophy case. Shot clock is at 10. Ivy for three. That's well short. That was an air ball. So as we said, repeating the question, will history repeat itself? A little bit of history repeating. ESPN's exclusive presentation of Championship Week is brought to you by Phillips 66, proud sponsor of today's Phillips 66 Big 12 basketball tournament. You can count on Phillips 66 quality pro clean gasolines. And in part by 7-Up and your local 7-Up bottler. Make 7-Up yours. 49-43, Oklahoma State on top in this uh, championship game of the Phillips 66 Big 12 Tournament. Here's a reminder, the NBA is taking over ESPN HD. Check out these games on Wednesday, Portland and Indiana on Friday. Houston at Golden State next Sunday, Houston at Sacramento. And for full schedule, log on to ESPN.com and search HD. Six seconds on the shot clock at the 633 mark. Boddicker. And that ball may have been partially blocked by Crawford. Again, the Cowboys get out in a hurry when you think you have an open shot. And you think you have space. Watch Boddicker. It's a face-up shooter. Crawford in a hurry. Royale Ivy is fourth personal foul. Number eight. Royale Ivy with his fourth foul, so he will have to go back to the bench. At the 6:30 mark, selection show coming up for the women's. I tell you what, it's a nervous time. Male, female, fans, players, coaches. Of course, you can see the entire women's NCAA tournament here on ESPN. Well, we got a chance. Congratulations to the. Uh, Oklahoma women who won the championship last night over the top seed, the Texas uh, Lady Longhorns. John Lucas now has 13 points in the ball game. Automatic from the foul line, 89% free throw shoot. Both teams have been cold from the field the second half. No, well, that's uh, going to be a push on Mons. They just come into the lineup. Does not play much. He's a freshman out of Macon, Georgia, 6'7". And his teammates are just saying, hey, just stay behind. Make him score over the top. Let's not put him on a foul line. Klotz, outstanding free throw shooter. Team field goal percentage by half. Second half, neither team doing well. Oklahoma State struggling also. Yeah, this thing in the second half has not been uh, a game of beauty, has it? Well, it's, it's always a battle. You play in these Sunday games. Players are tired. They come out in a, in a flurry usually in the first half. Remember last year in the second half, Oklahoma had built up a 22-point lead against Missouri and then couldn't score for about seven or eight minutes yeah. late in that game and held on. Part of the Texas bench looking on. We're about to go under six minutes to play. It's a six-point ball game, 51 to 45. Boy, Crawford went right down the middle on a crossover dribble. Got off balance. The shot when it was blocked was fine. Didn't know if there was body contact. He crosses over. Boddicker's going to make a clean block here. You know, probably a decent not no call. I mean, he didn't kind of when you split a defender with two defenders going sideways, you're off balance anyway. McFarlane in with four personal fouls. Lucas going to bring it out on top and run as much clock down here as as he can under six minutes left in this championship game. Got to be careful not to get too stagnant though just running clock down. 
That's for three. Not there. Allen skied for the rebound. Had to hold on to the rim so he didn't come down on top of a couple of other players. Legal because of safety. Yep. Back to the foul line goes Texas. And you hear the reaction from the crowd. Well, Mons and, uh, and Mouton had words underneath. Watch as the rebound. Mouton comes well, to the weak Mons side and swatted him away with his right hand there. Big guys hate it when guards, and though Mouton is 6'5 and a strong guard, but big guys hate it when the whistle blows, and here comes a player from the outside jumping up. Just part of the game. So quickly, the coaches get uh, Joey Graham back into the lineup. Well, I missed them both. Lucas comes away with the basketball. McFarlane fouled by Mouton. And Mouton caught that ball almost. Wow, I thought it was a heck of a block. Came from the weak side, and McFarlane didn't see him. This is uh, the way to move the ball up the court. Open pass. Watch how quickly Bobbitt fires it inside. Hard to tell from that angle. McFarland now has to deliver. Fourth foul on Mouton. Cowboys 58% from the free throw line this afternoon. It's becoming free throw shooting contest. Both teams have to quit fouling, make the other score. You know, Texas round only 56% from the foul line. They've had their struggles in the Big 12 tournament. They really have, John. It's it, it just all the way around. It has not been a good shooting day. Nine of uh, 16 from the free throw line. 34.7% from the field. Crawford will check back into the lineup. And McFarland goes out. He didn't, like, sprint out there either, did he? McFarland threw his crutches down, <laughs> hobbles out. Taylor got by Bobbick, passed up the shot. They go back into Klotz. Bobbick chasing Taylor hard. You cannot give him any room. Paulino looks up at the clock. It is at 10. Paulino will take the three. Strong rebound by Joey Graham. Oklahoma State crowd, the partisans up and cheering. The effort of their ball club. Again, you can't get too stagnant. You run the shot clock down to 10. A lot of times you don't get a quality shot. Lucas blocked by Klotz. John? We have now gone 10 plus minutes since Texas scored a field goal. Wow. <laughs> Thank goodness they've hit some free throws. But here's, here's what you worry about, I think, when you're Oklahoma State. They ran the shot clock down to 11 against a 2 3 zone. Well, it's not easy to get a, a good shot without working the ball against the zone anyway. Plots came over, and they're going to take a look at the shot clock to see if it expired before it trickled across the end line. I can see running clock, but I could see it. I can see if you're attacking and passing and making it move. Here comes John. Let's see if we can. Uh... Well, there's a shot, and it does land out of bounds, so there is time. One second. So now everybody squared away. One second. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. 
He shot it before the clock went off and it hit the rim. He got it up. Inadvertent whistle. I, I mean, I, he got it up, Ron, and then it hit the rim. Who would have had that rebound? I mean, I didn't see it. Lucas caught it underneath, got it off, it hit the rim. Rick Barnes is saying we would have had the ball anyway. This should be this will be Oklahoma State's ball, fresh shot clock. Coach Barnes is looking for any edge that he can get. When your ball club has not scored a field goal in over 10 minutes, do you <laughs> and then you have breaks go against you. Well, if that is in fact what should have happened. And the whistle went off. He got the shot and they threw it straight up in the air, but it did hit three. He got it off. We had an inadvertent whistle. We'll go with the inadvertent whistle. Now watch. Lucas gets it, just throws it up. Now he blows the whistle because I guess he assumed he wasn't going to hit the rim. I'm not sure why. Inadvertent whistle. 35 second shot clock. Oklahoma State ball. That is the proper call. So the Cowboys get it. A fresh 35 seconds, as John said. And they'll inbound it. Ivy will come back into the ballgame. Paulino will leave. Ivy's been out for quite a while. He did, was the same yesterday in their win over Kansas. But Rick Barnes trusts Royale Ivy down the stretch. He's won a lot of big games, made a lot of big plays. Offensive foul, Tony Allen. Tucker, so good with his feet. And now that's three on Allen. Tucker is an interior player, but can play outside and can really guard any of the five positions on the court. Once Allen lowers that shoulder, I think that's a good call. Show the timeout uh, taken by Oklahoma State. A reminder coming up immediately following this ball game, the NCAA Women's Selection Special. You'll find out who for the women's teams across the country are going to be going to their big dance. Here's what we got as far as the reset. A 60 each. Three 30s for Texas, only one for Oklahoma State. Ten fouls, Oklahoma State. The, the double bonus for the Longhorns and nine against the Longhorns. Possession error in favor of Texas. And if you're the Longhorns, who do you look for? I, I think uh, Klotz inside. You've got to get in more touches and let him try to go to work. If he's double teamed, find some openings. You've said they've gone over 10 minutes without a field goal. That's amazing. 10:39 right now. Oklahoma State 437. Not even imaginable if you're a Longhorn fan to think this ball club with the, all the firepower they have on that offensive end. Graham and McFarland for Oklahoma State both have four fouls. That's why I would attack down low at least with Klotz. And you see how far that they have forced them out. They're even starting their offense away from what normally is base. Good weak side help. Bounces it. They double team Tucker. He assumes the guy's open, and Bobbitt comes from way on the outside and makes the interception. Really nice defense on the part of the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Three and a half minutes remaining. Cowboys, a good ball handling team, a good free throw shooting team. Bobbitt scores, and he was fouled. Clutch. Nice pass, good vision by John Lucas. He turned the corner. Everyone assumes he's turning the corner to make the shot. He took an extra dribble and look, Bobbick snuck baseline right on the money. First two points for Bobbick this afternoon. Bobbick sneaks inside the ball fake just to get Klotz off his feet. Contact finishes the play. And he makes it a 10 point margin at the 312 mark. So let's take a timeout. Oklahoma State just three minutes and 12 seconds away. So welcome back to Dallas. Three minutes and 12 seconds left in the championship game. 
The Longhorns last got a field goal at the 14 to 48 mark. So they have gone 11 minutes and 36 seconds without a field goal. Amazing. I expect Mouton. He has done it the last two ball games here. He's done it all season long. Ivy has it blocked inside by Crawford, and Klotz is blocked by Crawford. Role players step up and make huge plays sometimes. And Terrence Crawford, two blocks in the same possession. Ivy thought he had a path down the lane as he turns the corner. Terrence Crawford with one, and then Crawford comes back with a second. Outstanding. 60% free throw shooter. Gets the first one, makes it a 12 point lead, Oklahoma State. Boddicker now with four fouls. Handles them both. Tony Allen on Mouton. Mouton's got to get open. He's got to want the basketball. Boddicker for three. Not there, rebounded by Crawford. And the challenge run defensively by McFarland made Boddicker rush. About to go under two minutes left to play. Bobby couldn't get a Crawford on the follow. He's been solid as a reserve all season, but the last minute and a half, Terrence Crawford defensively and now on the offensive end. And the reaction from his teammates. Two points, seven rebounds for Brian Boddicker as he heads to the bench after having fouled out. 2-0-2 left to play. Completes the three-point play. Ron, this game got to 42 to 39. And Texas has just been on a drought. Longhorns cannot buy a field goal. And Rick Barnes does not want his ball club to foul. Just see if they can come up with steals. Got one? Nope. Down the drought is now for 13 minutes for Texas. Longhorns have been a step, uh, step and a half behind all day long. They didn't come up with that one when they had a chance. Tony Allen pulls up, kisses it off the glass, and scores. These two teams, though, will be tough outs in the NCAA. This is a league in the last two years has had two Final Four teams. Two years ago, Kansas and Oklahoma. Last year, Kansas and Texas. Cowboys were the best team in this league all season long. Travel called against Crawford. Talking to Coach Sutton before the ball game today, and he made the statement. He said, I think that Texas will go a long way in the tournament. He said, I think they'll be extremely tough. I said, well, don't you put your club in that same position? He said, well, he's not going to talk that much about himself, but you're right, John. They're going to be a tough out as well. Well, he's got to love how they play. They've got so many offensive weapons. And I think for Rick Barnes this week, they've got to get back offensively into some kind of rhythm and flow in practice. They've got to get there because they've really struggled, not only this ball game, but the, against Oklahoma Friday night against Kansas. Kansas State, their loss, the last game of the year, they didn't play as well offensively. Mouton, they try to break the drought. Thomas on the follow, and there it is at the 56-second mark. And let's go to Reese Davis in the studio. Reese. Thanks so much. We look forward to hearing from you guys. Controversy. That's all this bracketology is, huh? <laughs> Let them all in. Let them all play. Eddie Sutton on the verge. A 
making history here at the Big 12 tournament. This building is like Gallagher Iva South, huh? I mean, this this cowboy crowd, unbelievable. Ball hit by Taylor as they try to inbound. 56.2 seconds left. Plotts trying to pick up the foul. Joey Graham so strong when the ball simply stepped through the double team. <laughs> well, that kid is uh, going to be terrific. Could be a preseason first team pick next year. Maybe possible player of the year candidate. Uh, he's that good. Yeah, I agree with you, John. This Oklahoma State team, you're right, could be very, very good next year as well. Well, what a year. You win the league outright in a strong conference. You're going to win the tournament championship. You mentioned Eddie Sutton celebrated his 68th birthday on Friday. They've had quite a season and uh, look to go well in the NCAA tournament. Lucas got the steal and he scores. Inside of 10 and Mouton will score with five seconds remaining. And if you're Texas, Ron, as a player, you forget about this. You had the regular season, you had the conference tournament, and now a new season starts. See if Texas can regroup and have a good run. So our final score, the Oklahoma State Cowboys 65 and the Texas Longhorns 49. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Oklahoma State held Texas to only two field goals in the final 14-48. They won the championship. Time now for the NCAA Women's Selection Special.